A virtual LAN or VLAN allows for the organizing of network devices into isolated groups which can provide for better management, security, and efficiency. Computer networks have been in existence for more than half a century, with a local area network or LAN as the most common. With a simple process of connecting to a central point called the network switch, today's LANs can range anywhere from just a few to hundreds of devices. But the issue that arises is that growth can also be detrimental to LANs. Let's delve deeper into why this is so. It is safe to say that in many large organizations, you will find multiple smaller departments. So in a situation where there are hundreds of devices, one best practice is to create LANs for each department. This separation will organize the overall network, making it more manageable. It will also provide a layer of security because network traffic will now be isolated to its own department. And because of the separation, there will also be less network congestion. Let me explain this one. Within a local area network, devices periodically send broadcast requests. On a small scale, where there are just a few devices, the effect goes mostly unnoticed. But when devices' numbers get into the hundreds, the broadcast requests can congest the network, slowing traffic. So we see why a large network may need to be divided into smaller lands. But how will we go about doing that? The first option is to use multiple network switches. Each switch will represent its own LAN which can only be accessed from the outside by a router. This is a simple and effective method, but if the environment is large and intermixed, the situation can quickly become messy and counterproductive. So network engineers had to look to a more flexible solution. VLAN is a logical approach to dividing up a network. It relies on a specialized switch that is capable of hosting multiple LANs. So let's create VLANs for each of our departments. Now, depending on the number of devices, we can use a single VLAN switch or multiple VLAN switches, connecting them through what are known as trunk lines. On the switch itself, we will designate a set of ports for each VLAN we want to create. For wireless connections, we can do this using the device's MAC address. We can connect our devices to the corresponding VLANs, which are now isolated from each other and can now only be accessed from the outside through routers, just like physical LANs. And that's basically what VLAN is. By using this technology, we can logically divide a network into smaller LANs that are more manageable, secure, and efficient. This brings us to the end of a basic breakdown of virtual local area networks, or VLANs. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you're not. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.